Now I want to dig a little bit deeper into your hijab niqab journey. How did you start the hijab and then how did that transform to you becoming a niqabi? It was like a big moment for me because I was like so I'm fearing the the creation which is a virus mm. and for out of fear of that creation I'm ready to cover my face but out of love and fear like a healthy fear of my creator I'm not ready to do it. And when you started writing professionally what were some of the challenges that you faced were there like any <clears throat> incidents that happened and then he was like no you you'll never be able to become a good writer no way <laughs> Jokes he said on that him. in one now, class. I mean girl <laughs> I never wanted to become an influencer, influencer. Like, <laughs> content creator it was just yeah. like something i don't know it's like it's it happened accidentally <laughs> yeah like people love riding horses but most of them uh, they don't know they don't know that it's sunnah Hello and welcome to the Bigger Picture podcast. Today's guest is the definition of breaking stereotypes. She's a horseback archer, she's a content creator, she's an entrepreneur, she's so much more and I'm so excited to hear her story. Hello Amina, welcome to the Bigger Picture podcast. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. This is I'm so excited to be here. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for coming. So basically, me and Amina, we go way back. We've been Instagram friends for a couple of years yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, always like talking online and you know hyping each other up. Like and I was both actually us- following you for like a really long time, even before we connected. So oh, we go yeah. way back. <laughs> basically, yeah, we would like always comment on each other's pictures yeah, and everything. Exactly. So it's been really nice, and I've seen how you've grown your page as well, and I'm so proud of it. So inspired. <laughs> so basically, to start off, can you tell us what have you been up to recently, and how is like the content creation journey going right now? Um, it's it's going well. It's exciting. Um, I feel like sometimes there's like a bit of pressure to, you know, because like once your following starts to grow further yeah. and further, you have this, um, like you start setting standards for yourself. Before it was like all casual. And I mean, and sometimes then I start to think that, no, I need to make it casual. It doesn't okay. always have to be like always HD or, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Alhamdulillah, it's going well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I'm working through it. Okay, that's good. So basically, you're not just uh, a content creator, you're studying as well, you're working, you're freelancing, you have your business. So how do you manage everything together? Oh my how God. is that going for I you? I get that so, like, I get this question all the time. And <laughs> honestly, I don't know how, how I do it because I feel like I don't even do it well. It's no, honestly, so chaotic. Job. And um, I mean, I I really want to like take a step back and slow it down because I feel mm. like for the past, ever since I started my photography business, because before this horse riding thing happened, I was basically um, like basically working as a freelance photographer and also a full-time student. So just managing yeah. those two things together was so overwhelming for me. And then when horse riding came in, it was like an escape. But yes. obviously it was another added thing. It was like your hobby as yeah, well. It exactly. started off with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and alhamdulillah, like, I managed my time well in the sense that if like the, the whole horse riding thing usually happens at like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Yes. So it doesn't like get in the schedule. But um it looks very glamorous from the outside, mm. but the reality is kind of it's it gets really overwhelming for me. Like sometimes yeah. I just want to like not do anything because I have like studies and then there's assignments and there's like for the freelancing thing, you have to manage clients, like, yes. the editing, like the long hours. And then for horse riding as well. And then managing the page and then the business. That I, just I don't started, know how to do it. I don't know. No, I do. do it's you like have my like, brain is like, Shh. yeah. So, uh, do you have like your family or someone to support you with all of this? Do they help you or, or yeah, it's a like, one man I, show? <laughs> <laughs> I think like the major part of it is obviously one man show. Yeah. But I have my mom and dad with me at home. So, like, they like, um, they help me out. At, at, like, I don't have to do like a lot of house chores or anything. Okay. So, that's yeah, that's good. like a big support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of pushing through it. Okay, that's great. Maybe not in the best way possible, but she's trying. I mean, you're trying really <laughs> hard and I can tell that that's what I wanted to ask you. How are you managing? Because I see from what I see, I see a very like nice and organized content <laughs> and all of that. And how was the support from your family when you started growing your page and like from the content creation side as well? They were actually very, very supportive. Alhamdulillah. That's my so my good. mom and dad have been the biggest support for me. And if it wasn't for their support, I never would have gotten the confidence. Actually, it was my mom who uh, like pushed me to fo- post my first video ever. No way. Like, for, That's like so a cool. horse riding video. Because before my account um, turned into like a horse riding thing, yeah. it was a photography page. And I had like yes. 2K followers or something. And I used to post like photos, um, landscapes, whatever. But then um, I made a video. It was like my, I think my fourth class yeah like training uh for horse riding my mom was like you know like you should probably post this 
uh, so that people get inspired that you know you can actually ride with the abaya and it's not something exactly. that's you know yes um because you don't really see it that often mm. um so yeah but, and then it just like so so slowly, slowly with time it went to 5k and then you know like, oh my god yeah from there on it, <laughs> it just, just escalated mashallah it's like i think i was just checking before i got here you're about to reach 300,000 yeah, on instagram oh which it's, is huge and i sometimes like the number is so overwhelming like right? i imagine it's like they're all people yeah like imagine all of those people in a room like yeah. that's how i think like, about it sometimes as content creators we tend to like the, it just becomes a number for yeah, us like even the think... likes and everything but if you actually think about it it's like actual people you know yeah and then you and think uh, what a big achievement that is when you imagine the numbers and it's in also so um it's kind of scary like you have access to so many people and right? it's like a big responsibility like everything i'm seeing it can have a huge impact and people are actually Because it's people really look up to me, and that's yeah. so scary to me. Because I mean, I feel like I don't like. <laughs> I know. I can't imagine. You're like, I'm not worthy for this. Like, don't look up to me. It can be But overwhelming it is. for sure. Yes, seriously is. And when you started writing professionally, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Were there like any <clears throat> incidents that happened, or how was that um, like? Yeah, I have a little bit of tea. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Give me all the tea. Exactly. <laughs> um, but um, I would say, alhamdulillah, being in the UAE, it was. A very supportive environment, mm. um, and in my head before starting, I thought that it would be a bit of a hassle to start the abaya on the horse. Yeah. Um, but actually, how things turned out, it, it that was not the case. Definitely, it's not something you see that often. But since sure. it's the the alhamdulillah, it's, it's a Muslim country, and so ex- yeah. abaya it's, itself is so accepted and everything. So it wasn't something that the cl- the wear I was training. They were like, no, you can't wear it. Instead, they were exactly. like, yeah, you can wear it. That's good. Um, and then you, I realized that we have these like mental barriers and we have these assumptions that oh, just because I wear this, I can't do that. Sometimes you just have to go out there and like and give it a it. shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like things might actually work out. So the but but I would say Alhamdulillah, I I did have like a very supportive instructor who really uh, never like, he never even commented on my abaya. And that's the first thing I liked because. I want to be treated normally, you know. Yeah. Like you don't have to make me feel like I'm special because like she's wearing all this. Just exactly. Treat me like all the other students. Yeah. But uh, this one class, I accidentally booked with this other trainer. Okay. And um, he was he was like really really rude to me. Oh, he was like um, weirded out or something. Yeah, like that. he he had this like you know that inner bias that you have mm. and like that prejudice. Yeah. So he just I had like he was being really off and then. Um, I think I, yeah. He was basically suddenly he was like, "Why do you have?" Because basically we were having a little bit of an argument because you know okay. how you use the whip on the horse, and I yeah. have this like thing that I don't want to use it because I'm like, because you don't want to hurt them. Yeah, I yeah. have like my own thing, and the other instructor was like, "Cool, like she's yeah. you know she's she's too soft to use <laughs> this stuff." So he he was he was already a bit of like um, like we had a thing going on, um, and then suddenly he was like, "Why do you have to wear this on the horse?" And then I was like, "Cause I was like." It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then he was like, "No, like if you want to be a professional rider, you have to, you know." He was like, "Yo, you can just like wear, you know, a long, um, long, long sleeve shirt, shirt and like yeah. long pants." But then, then I was like, "I mean, I respect if someone wants to wear that, but I want to wear this." And exactly, it's record. your choice. Yeah. And why do you have to comment on what I wear? Exactly. And then he was like, "No, you you'll never be able to become a good rider." No way. <laughs> Jokes said on him. Now, nah, I mean, girl, <laughs> send him a screenshot of your page. Exactly. Be like, I made it. He actually follows me. Oh. <laughs> I don't follow him back though. <laughs> <laughs> but I, i actually started i remember because i'm like a soft person if someone yeah if, especially if a man kind of puts pressure on you like that i mm. mean it, it gets a bit like fighting up and like standing up for yourself it gets overwhelming that's true i actually started to shake <laughs> and i was getting tears I'm sensitive. oh god <laughs> this happened once oh my, like in one class it was class? just that one class and oh then after god. that i was like never again because i just do want to i want to leave the stable hmm. i obviously gave him like a huge speech i was like stomachly like I can you're wear whatever I to. want, yeah. and you know you're not supposed to comment on what I wear. And um, this is like a very accepted form of like riding attire. Like I was in the mm-hmm. past, I was like in the past, people used to like literally fight wars wearing this stuff and exactly. more. Exactly. So it's not like this is not possible just because it's not something common. So it's mm. okay. Yeah. I think yeah, you were the, one of the first riders I <clears> saw <throat> on an abaya as well because I don't follow professional riders a lot. But after you posted and then you would repost other people, I got to know it's more common. And even yeah. my mom, she's like, "Wow, how is she doing it?" <laughs> so like, what's the story? You know, is there like a special kind of abaya that you use, or how is that like? Yeah, I. Uh, so this is also like a whole story of how I got into it. I. Um, I didn't ride for like basically I was a rider when I was young. I was like mm. when I was 10 or whatever because obviously I was like basically horse obsessed since yeah. I was a kid. <laughs> um it's in the genes literally. <laughs> okay, is are your parents into that as well? Um I mean no, I mean like yeah, my mom is. 
Okay, she wasn't into sense. like she probably like didn't get the opportunity to ride, but she was okay. always like she loved horses and everything. Okay. So yeah, basically after I grew up, I really wanted to ride, but then I was like, the, how am I gonna wear the abaya? Because it's the abaya that we wear. The it's circum- like a dress. Yeah, like, and it's a dress, it's and one. the circumference is so small that exactly. you know it's gonna get scrunched mm. up, and then it's gonna show my legs, and then yeah. I can What's just wear a long shirt instead of wearing an abaya. Exactly. So I just thought it could never work out. Then, but I used to like think about what if I like make a special skirt that could maybe you know cover me. But it was just like yeah. all too much. So randomly, I think I saw this abaya on noon. That had like this cut, which I actually got a year ago. I just found it pretty. And then when I suddenly um, went up, like basically what happened was I uh, used to walk back home from the university. Mm. Uh, I mean, from uni, I used to take the metro and then from the metro, I used to walk home. Okay. So the stable used to come on the way. And this horse riding, yeah, this horse riding dream was like something I thought that now it's just like not possible. So I should just like let it go. Yeah. And then suddenly um, I started to realize that no i should it, even if i'm not riding the horse it doesn't matter exactly i should still go to the stable and still spend time with him because my love isn't like i don't love horse riding i love horses yes. right so that's how i think allah put it in my heart that you know i it made me go back to reconnect with my inner yeah. child type and you of thing. could like you know you followed your passion and i exactly, love that exactly yeah so then one day i just like went up to them and they're like yes yeah, so, like abaya's fine and then when i was oh, brainstorming wow. i realized that oh i have this one abaya that's actually so wide so it's gonna flow around me so then I basically, um, I just went to, <laughs> and I wore that abaya and it worked perfectly, alhamdulillah. Wow, okay, good. And then from there, I, I obviously kind of like realized, oh, okay, so then minor adjustments mm. and like how to like make it really like equestrian friendly so yes. that it's safe um, and you know, like what length and like all the details. Okay, that's cool. And uh, so basically doing all mm-hmm. your horse riding content as well, that's like a very different niche that you have. So for example, if I'm, I'm basically a food content creator, so the perks that i get are going out for tastings getting paid collaborations like that yeah so in the horse riding community what does that look like like can you monetize your content do you get to go on trips or anything like that yeah uh there are a few benefits like i visited italy a few a few months ago oh, actually wow, that was last amazing. year in may and um i was gonna ride at a place of course and i was ready to pay but obviously it was quite expensive i was like whatever yeah. But when they saw my page, they were like, <laughs> for free. And I was no like, oh way. my God, no way. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, exactly. It's always so exciting in the beginning, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, th- those are like little perks that you do get definitely. Mm-hmm. And touching back on what you said earlier about you're not seeing a lot of women who do this. And then when I shared stuff, you realize, oh, there are yeah. actually. I would say that um, the reason behind, like the main reason behind why I even started posting and allowed this to grow so much. Because mm. I never wanted to become an influencer, influencer. Like, <laughs> content creator it was just yeah. like something i don't know it's like it's it happened too, accidentally too intense. yeah <laughs> but the reason why i did it was because the there's no representation for equestrian abaya clad or like niqab yes. especially niqabi clad women yes hijab still it's getting more yeah, common exactly but niqab, and, not so and much. even in the sports world in general mm. that's where this kind of thing came from because there's no representation and that's why when i started it i had no one to look up to and no one to see and be like, oh, so if she's like, get support from. Because, you know, yes. you feel like you're the only one that gets, it's, it's it's so hard. So then I found some women on Instagram from Egypt, from Saudi Arabia, and mm. from um, like a few, few women. Like I, I would, I could literally count them on my fingers. Okay. So who, you built your community to support yeah, each other. And I, I started watching their videos and I was like, wow, if they Fun can inspired. do it, then I, yeah. Mm. And then like, I have now I'm like actually friends with those women as well, which is so nice. And it's amazing. like the... This equestrian abaya naqab. I don't know what 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 yeah, word it's is like, it's for this. It's a very different niche, yeah. by the way. That's exactly. The thing. Yeah. It's, it's a it's, unique. It's a very small community, but yeah. alhamdulillah, like I feel like it's starting to grow more and more now because like women and girls send me photos of themselves on the horse, like oh wearing God, all of this. And so it's cute. so wholesome, and they're like, "We got inspired by you," and like we start, we you know, we're following our dream now. I'm yeah. like, "Oh my God." Even for me, after looking at your videos, I'm like, I need to enroll myself and go for these horse riding classes. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, but I'm very, Inshallah very inspired. And I your feel like it's such a because like, you know, if you inspire someone to you know, do good and yeah. stuff, like it's, and it's actually, it's a sunnah. So mm, that's, that's like a really nice way of thinking as well. Yeah. And I feel like this is da'wah, but without actually saying anything, it's like, it's like in, through actions, mm. you know, like someone just, you're not saying anything, but you're still making a statement. Yeah. That's so nice. I never would have thought from yeah. that perspective but i love that <laughs> that's the whole concept behind my page to okay. kind of promote the whole sunnah because it's it's a very like people love riding horses but most of them uh, they don't know they don't know that it's sunnah okay. uh, even archery and like all these sports so that's why i'm always like posting how these is in my <laughs> caption yeah <laughs> and what are some of the 
pros and cons of like having a page and doing content creation and everything in your way like um, what would you say i think it's it's all mental to be honest because sometimes mm. i feel like if i go somewhere to ride they're like oh she has like x amount of followers so she like how would she like i feel like i i'll get judged cuz if oh. if you're just like a like an ordinary rider even if yeah. you ride in a bad way or let's say if i'm they're not going to judge yeah or let's say um i really in shall plan to compete internationally hopefully as well in oh horseback God, archery competitions wait. that's so cool so before it, like if i didn't have any following i would have been like i'm just another participant yeah but now i'm like people will be like oh so she's like she acts all fancy on instagram <laughs> how is she in real life you know yeah. like it's like there's more pressure uh, i know yeah. it's just like a mental thing people probably don't care it's all in here by the way yeah yeah exactly it's gonna be very chill when you go yeah so i think it's just that but other than that alhamdulillah i've i like the this like whole page thing because because of that i've built such a nice community and i've gotten to get to know such like strong empowering beautiful women like horse riders that's amazing and we have like a little community and it's, it's so wholesome and about your content like do you have a videographer because i've seen the videos are very <laughs> hd very professional <laughs> iphone baby <laughs> no way i it's, mean like not all of them but like yeah some of them i can tell it's like very yeah, uh, DSLR, cinematic basically yeah, yeah. and do you have people to help you do that yes or? uh and that is also one of the perks that like when you and i don't really like it cuz i mean it's like a weird thing but when you have obviously more followers and a lot of photographers yeah. would like to collaborate with you so um, and i also and since i am in the photography field so i have photographer friends as well yes so that's true yeah some of my videos have been filmed by really good photographers and one of my like most of my viral videos have been filmed by this really really like amazing photographer from turkey who who's also a good friend now oh he comes all the way yeah he's come here a so few cool. times he's he's an equine photographer like videographer photographer he is so talented like oh. most of my videos that went viral are because of him yeah it's like a whole um, industry like there's yeah. specific photographers and videographers for this yeah. that's so cool and um i don't know if you know mahima i probably i think i've seen her on your stories yes yeah she's also a photographer so she like she made one for me and then i have another friend lu she's also a horse rider she's also a really good photographer so she's made from made one for me but then usually most of my videos are actually filmed from iphone yeah my iphone I <laughs> and that. i got the good one cuz i was like I you got that. the 15 no no i, I got the 14 pro oh, okay. last year and i was like cuz i need that crisp quality yeah, a lot of people are saying by the way 14 It's pro and so 15 good. there's not much difference yeah, exactly. so you're good yeah, from like, you don't need an upgrade to 14 was like a yeah, good job for sure for sure yeah. and now i want to dig a little bit deeper into your hijab niqab journey how did you start the hijab? job and then how did that transform to you becoming a nikabi oh my god i love this question <laughs> brother asked a very good question i'm so sorry i had to say that <laughs> dr zakir <Zakunai. laughs> nai shout out <laughs> okay love so that. um my alhamdulillah i grew up in a very islamically oriented family which is a huge blessing yeah. alhamdulillah um my mom's was my mom was a nikabi so that was something that i saw From ever since I was born, basically, it was like the norm for me. Mm. But um, I was I didn't wear the naqab up until like a few years ago, which is I started in 2021. Uh, so I'm not like getting emotional. It's just I was laughing. So oh, okay. Anyways. I thought I'm like wow. Oh God, this story. <laughs> no, <laughs> this story is gonna be very emotional, guys. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Okay. <laughs> no. So I started the hijab ever since I was like like I don't know 11, 12. Whenever you start the hijab. Yeah. Um, and it was. Um, It wasn't something that I had. I mean, we were never forced into it. Yeah. But since I choice. had, yeah, I was the youngest sibling, so I saw all my sisters do it. I saw, like, mm. it's like something you just, you know, you have to do, yeah. and you're completely okay with it. In fact, I was like mm. always excited to do it because I wanted to grow up faster. Yeah. So I wanted to wear it even That's before nice. I had to wear it. <laughs> okay. You were even uh, like because your sisters were wearing it, you were inspired by them. Yeah, as well. yeah. It was like something that you know. Oh my god, I even felt cool. Oh my god, now I'm hijabi. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool now. Don't I'm talk to of, me. I'm in the gang now. <laughs> I'm holier than thou. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so no, it's not like that. It's not like that. That was just like a kid mindset. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I I don't know. My hijab journey has been like the same because hmm. I uh, when I started the hijab, I started the abaya directly again because of the it's it's the norm Family for you. Thing. Okay. And then you and since we always had like religious discussions and everything, so like I had a good grasp of the hijab and I did it with my heart. Okay. And never had like doubts about it and everything. But yeah, the naqab has been like it's been like a roller coaster kind of thing. Okay. It was um, since I saw my mom and I I knew in my head that this is like a goal, and I knew that you know I'm supposed to reach this goal. But then it was reaching that goal was a really big, uh, mm, really yeah. hard step, especially in 
like this time right now you yeah know? exactly when it's not that common and then you mm. you have all these fears that okay if i start the niqab then i'm not going to be able to do this that exactly and it's like there's so many like there's there's so much and i remember i was in school i think when i was in the ninth and 10th grade i had this like thing that i want to start and then i was like okay i'll wait a f- i'll wait for a few years yeah. and then i would reach af- like after those few years i'd be like uh, okay like further down the okay. line like i was like you know postponing <laughs> you would it you keep pushing it yeah mm. cuz you're like no like if i start now and like people in school would think what an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah and, like you'll get judged and everything yeah yeah and then when i was in a levels i was like yeah i want to start but then i was like okay i want to cuz at that time I, i was planning to study medicine yeah so i was going to go to army medical college which is in pakistan and that university does not allow naqab like it's banned there what i don't even know man <laughs> it's 2023 how Girl, can you exactly. do it? i don't yeah. know if people aren't allowed to like yeah and it's pakistan like yeah it's a muslim it's country it's wild right wow, i don't even I did know. Not know that yeah but basically it's not allowed there so i was like so if i start now and then if i yeah. go there and it's not allowed i have to take it off there then it's going to cause like discrepancy and then exactly it's going to be you wanted to be a smooth yeah process. once i start i start mm-hmm. yeah But then um after that I think then covid happened mm. and uh like I feel like covid was a huge blessing in disguise for a lot of people and for me Honestly, as well yeah. like I now I've come to the point where if you get excess time it's actually a blessing from Allah yeah, because time is sure. a gift because we're always like in such a like we're always doing things we don't get time to like actually take a step back and like you know take everything in everybody's in a rush all the time yeah you're always yeah. doing so many things so in uh during covid I actually got to reconnect with myself as a person and also as a muslim and like really work on my relationship with allah and i feel like at that time my iman was like the highest wow okay because you were spending a lot of time at home and like yeah, you had time my, to exactly. educate yourself and it a was little basically bit. like um and uh, after universe i mean after high school i took a gap year okay so it was also a gap year so i wasn't studying or anything it was okay. just like it was completely free okay. so during that time i basically started to really um i started to read the sira like in detail so that basically made me fallen like love with islam and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam like i learning about his life that like made me realize that we don't actually know him yes and since we don't know him we say yeah we love allah and we we love the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we actually don't because we we're not like how can you love someone if you don't know them yes so <clears throat> after i actually studied this year like that and even like right now i've just scratched like at that time i scratched the surface and that already ma- made me and you wanted to know more yeah, right exactly so i mean obviously i'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how i felt but basically mm. it was a really like a big wake up call for me as a muslim and as a person and <clears throat> then it kind of like reset my priorities in my mind and at that time everyone basically started to wear the mask yeah yes so suddenly i remember i was like reciting the quran one day um and it just randomly hit me so i'm i'm already wearing a mask so i'm technically already oh, an aqabi oh interesting and but it's just i'm not an aqabi because in my head i'm like i'm not an aqabi yeah okay yeah and then i was like so it was like a big moment for me because i was like so i'm fearing the the creation which is a virus mm. and for out of fear of that creation i'm ready to cover my face but out of love and fear like a healthy fear of my creator i'm not ready to do it wow so i love I was that like, that, that really gets so you thinking in, yeah. And then I was like, like, it, what if this is like a minor form of shit? Because you're not, because mm-hmm. you know, like, I I don't know if this is a hadith. I don't want to like quote something wrong, but I think it is. I don't know. But uh, I read something like, um, like that shit can creep up into your heart. Like there's like this analogy that if it's like it's a dark night and there's like a black stone and there's a black ant, so it can creep into your heart like that. Like sometimes you can't even tell it's shit, but it actually is. Like on a minor minor okay. level. So it just kind of hit me that you know. If I'm wearing um, the mask, why not just yeah, wear the niqab? Exactly. And then, like, I was like, it's not that big. And and I was like, okay, let's see. Let's say that even if I have to go to that university where they don't allow it, yes. now since the mask is so commonly you accepted, just wear that. I'll just be wearing that mm-hmm. and, like, purpose served. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to close my eyes and jump into the deep end. And I'm going to start because... And, and, I, the, and I always feel like if you if your iman is high and you want to do something good, just do it right away. Because then if you don't, then, like, shaitan is going to be like... Like yeah, after, you're like, gonna sort of like deviate from yeah, the path. Yeah, like, exactly. And uh, before that, I w- had been like praying during the Hajj and stuff like that, you know, for Allah to guide me. Yeah. And that's like one of the main advices I give to girls when they ask me that you th- they want to start the hijab. Yeah, or the that naqab. was actually my next question. Like, yeah. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's still thinking about it? Like, what would be your words of motivation for them to start? Yeah, I my I, I always say this to girls that 
you need to wake up for the hajjad and pray for guidance because mm. like when we pray to allah for something we, we're like he might give it to us if it's best for us and he yes. might not if it's not good for us yeah but the dua for guidance that's like a hundred percent always going to be accepted because exactly. there's no way guidance is not good for you <laughs> and i've witnessed this firsthand every time i pray for guidance during the hajjad literally within a few days you get a sign or something i get a sign and like you get that like you feel it it's yes. obviously it's being accepted and obviously it's the hajjad so and like don't stop thinking about it so if you want to uh move forward in your hijab journey wherever you are like do not stop th- stop thinking about it and like keep trying to push yourself yeah and i heard this um lecture by mufti mank on this topic and he he gave this really good advice he was like wherever you're standing stay there so don't look back example if you're at okay. a stage where let's say you're you're not even a hijabi but you're wearing loose clothes yeah so just stay there don't stay there. don't take yeah. a step back and just keep looking forward at your goal because if you take even one step back then shaitan's gonna make that 20 steps back Yeah, so one step true. forward is one step forward but one step back is never one step back it always like like exponentially goes back yeah exactly and this is i think advice for people as well that f- number one uh number one thing is never like force yourself into something yeah. let yourself grow into that exactly. and even for like families that pressurize their daughters to start the hijab and all of that this happens yeah even it's in, so true even now it happens it's like 2024 i think not that, even 2023, i think that causes yeah. rebellion and Yeah. I, I mean, if you want to do something, especially with this hijab and everything, you shouldn't force that as a, as an action. Hmm. You should instead go back to the root. So, and that's what worked for me. Like for so many years, I wanted yes. to do it, but I couldn't do it because I feel like my relationship with Allah was not that strong enough. So, if you want you your to child to do that. it, or even if you want to do it yourself, go to the root and then work on your relationship with Allah. Once you build that, like it'll just all just like work out on their on its own. Yeah, and that's the thing. Islam is a very simple religion. People have overcomplicated yeah, it for no reason, right? Like a... It's very practical yeah. and all of that. And you know, uh, now I just remembered the thing that you said about the mask. I was thinking when COVID happened and we had to wear masks. Paris used to literally ban the niqab. I was, and like, then when COVID happened, everybody was wearing yeah. the mask and literally looked like you know the niqab. They exactly. were forced to do it. Yeah. So it's like God's own yeah. way of you and know showing. And I feel like that actually reduced the stigma. Yeah. around niqab because I went I to Italy so, now yes. and I was actually nervous that oh I'm like a niqabi and mm. this was my first time in like a hardcore European country because I had visited Georgia before but that's like a Muslim that's not country like, uh, no, no, Georgia Georgia oh I thought Jordan okay, yeah no, Georgia. I meant like uh, that but that's Western Eastern Europe so Eastern Europe geography yeah. is so bad <laughs> but like Italy is like a hardcore you know I mean yeah. I don't know you always have this like apprehensions of how it's going to be like but because of the niqab i feel like people didn't even look at me weird i had like zero bad experiences no although i went to like rome venice florence i went like to a lot of oh, places mashallah i'm so glad you and didn't like, have any issues a lot of the locals were actually smiling at me i was like oh my god so you don't hate me <laughs> <laughs> how do you like, keep yourself like you know positive with everything um like what's your mindset like um i feel like it's it's knowing that what you're like at least whatever i'm doing is right in the sense that i get a lot of comments as well where people are like you know kind of throwing hate or whatever but it never gets to me okay that's good um because i know that whatever like you know in my heart i look i'm no what i'm doing is right and i'm like i'm trying to be better and um yeah because i get a lot of comments where like oh like you're not supposed to ride horses like, how do you haram. deal with that by the way how do you deal with the hate like do you reply or do you ignore what's your <laughs> I process i take screenshots and i post <laughs> on my close friends <laughs> and i troll them in private oh my god you should troll them publicly by the way that's not right <laughs> i need to maintain like a like a, oh you like know, that nice she, persona nice girl yeah i'm a close friend. i'm like <laughs> this is a real one <laughs> exactly But uh, yeah, but that's this is actually one of the main concerns that I have, which I try to address, but I'm kind of confused how to like really address it. Hmm. Is that I get so many messages from girls saying that is horse riding haram, or like does it like damage us as a like a, from like a fertility perspective? Yeah, and I have to send them paragraphs that no, like that's not the case. Like, that's basically is, like a myth, I think. Yeah, it's a myth. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, no, but like our our husband or like our fathers or like our parents are like forbidding us. And then I, I actually didn't know people think like that. They really this is the first do. time I'm hearing about this. And every time I post questions on my story, I get every time I get questions about this. So yeah, then I had to like really exp- I try to explain this as much as I can, but I always get comments. Every time a video goes viral, I get comments like, "She's going to hell," or like, um, <laughs> "She's she's not going to be first." Whatever. I'm just like, first of all, why insane. are you worried about this? <laughs> Literally, that's your problem. Ex- exactly. People on Instagram are concerned for no reason. Oh like it's like they don't like they're just monsters yeah. typing behind a screen. And they have this such like weird religious reason. They're like, so if you're sitting, because basically they're like, you as a woman, you can only sit on a horse if you put both of your legs to one side. 
And if you're sitting oh. as like a normal human being, apparently it's haram or whatever. Which oh my like God. there's no basis to That's this. So crazy. It's it's all cultural. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, because this resembles a man. So and in riding Islam, a horse. Uh, yeah, sitting like that. Yeah. And then in Islam, <clears throat> resembling a man is not allowed. So this is why it's haram. I mean, mm, the they math have their own math weird. Thing. Yeah, it's like I I don't know. Anyways, like, as far as I know, I've done like a lot of research on this. Yeah, this is just cultural. It's this has like no religious spaces. And I mean, women at the time, um, in the Islamic history, and that's actually how I got the. That's this was my main motivation be- me, behind starting horse riding, wearing yeah. all of this, because when like I told you, I was reading the Sira and everything. Yeah. Mm. So I got so inspired by the women uh, at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and how they were. Uh, doing so many things while wearing all of this like for them this was not a limitation like and yes. and they were like this like the current um thing that i'm doing this this isn't even like the optimal like the you know what they, they did. used to do more yeah they oh. were like i mean I, I exactly don't know how they did it but obviously they they were at their like the perfect perfect form of hijab which is like naqab everything in the islamic history there like we have these women that girls don't even know about yeah and they're so like empowering and they're all so that. empowering and you re- and that's um uh, i feel like with girls now young girls we don't have um uh, we don't the reason why we don't see hi- like we see hijab and all of this as a limitation is because we don't know our own history exactly we see like this other tainted form of <clears throat> history that makes us believe that this is a limitation if we were to actually tell our kids that you know the women like islam has such strong beautiful women who did all of this while wearing this, people like exactly. girls would actually start to love the hijab because the main reason why even I didn't start the niqab is because in my head it was a limitation. And, and for now all it's of, not. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would say that even if in some cases it is, there are always ways to work around it. And still, and, and you have to like think about your main purpose. So is my main purpose the dunya or the akhira? So even if let's say I am experiencing um, a setback because of it, in the bigger picture, it's, it's a step forward for me. And um, that's really good because that's your whole message. That's your whole goal with your page as well to empower women. And I love like everything that you said. I think a lot of people are going to get inspired by that. Yeah. And the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was your entrepreneur journey. You started your Abaya line, which is so cool. It's like an equestrian Abaya. Like, what do you call it exactly? I call it the modest equestrian. <clears throat> okay, cool. So um, <clears throat> that's been, alhamdulillah, that's been a journey in that I, that started and that was something I never even imagined myself doing. Yeah. But once I like I blew up on Instagram that way, I started getting an influx of comments and messages of girls saying, "Where do you, like what are you wearing? Like how?" And people were so confused, and I get that because even when I started wearing, I had no idea what to wear. Exactly. It's like a gap in the market. I think. Yeah. That's it's, what you that, saw. It's a huge. And I've talked about this before, but I feel like um, the the whole hijab concept is is really accepted now, alhamdulillah, in the world and even yes. the sports community, but it's a specific type of hijab. So in like the Nike ads or like yes. the official ads, you'll see the, the hijab is there. But it's, uh, so like hij- like a lot of women are on this hijab journey. It's like a spectrum. So it's just like for one part of that spectrum. Okay. It's not and for I've, everyone. It's not for everyone. Mm. And that leaves women who are at the other side of the spectrum who are, you know, who are wearing, let's say, women who are wearing the niqab, abaya and everything. We feel like um, not represented and we feel like oh so we have to comply to that part of the hijab yes. to be able to um, participate in sports mm. so this is like my whole muslim women empowerment um, agenda you could say is to make women understand that you don't have to comply to a certain type of hijab to feel like oh you, now we can pursue sports yes it can uh, be in any kind yeah and as long as yeah. islam permits it i'm not saying mm-hmm. <laughs> go for certain sports that are you know not yeah. like outside like whatever is within the circle of islam yes you should definitely go for it so the that's that was the like the, the thought behind the brand okay to make to make modesty accessible for muslim women who are into horse riding and i like inshallah i plan to grow it into like other sports as well but let's see how it goes that, that, um, that's really nice but yeah, because I feel like, again, that's a gap in the market. If you go on Google and you search horse riding, like abaya. modest wear, or like abaya, yeah. you don't really get anything. And mm. it's also confusing. And you'll, you'll just see like random blog posts, but then you're just like, what am I supposed to wear? Exactly. So I wanted something that makes women feel like, like if we're doing the hijab or abaya or naqab or whatever, we don't have to give up on our dreams. That's amazing. And are you getting a good response? Like, are yeah. people purchasing it from around the world? Yeah, because I, I feel like most of my clients have yes. been uh, from, like, around the world. Like, I get messages from Indonesia, Malaysia, UK, South Africa, USA, oh my Europe, God, that's even crazy. France. And I was like, wow, mashallah. That's but amazing. I love that. 
alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's going well. Um, but I would say that since I'm doing way too many things at once, mm. it gets a bit too much for me to handle. So inshallah, I'm waiting that once I graduate, which I am inshallah in a few months, it'll be a bit easier for me okay. to really... And it's just and then you can focus now. on it as well. Yeah. So since we mentioned graduation, you are studying psychology, which is so interesting to me. So can you tell <clears throat> me how has that affected your life? Like studying psychology, does that affect the way you think about things? Maybe the way you analyze people, analyze your own behavior? Like what's the thought process now? <laughs> uh, I think you're always self-diagnosing yourself. <laughs> I yeah, definitely have ADHD. That's, that's <laughs> what I see on TikTok. Like psycho- I, psychologists yeah, are exactly. saying that. I feel like in every class, I'm like, yeah, I definitely have this disorder. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but uh, I feel like it's, I I went into this field because I loved it so much. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it's really helped me get better. Like shape, it has shaped like me as a mentally person. mentally get better? Mentally get better. And like in general, like my perspective on life, because I feel like we were too stringent or like too narrow-minded mm. about how we process other people and how we see other people. So it has yes. really changed the way I look at other people, how I how I judge or like I feel like I, I get angry less now because um, now I understand why if someone's acting that way why I, 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 might, yeah, I, I might was just gonna bad. say that as well yeah. yeah I might still feel bad but now you like, I really understand that okay so where they're coming from or it's like it helps me it has helped me establish boundaries that's mm-hmm. like I think one of the main things that I we all struggle, struggle with establishing sure. healthy boundaries and realizing that you know like that's a them problem it's not a me yeah, problem and sometimes you need to say no in life like you can't yeah. always be a yes and person like, even like emotionally sometimes you need to realize that whatever they're making me feel it's it's coming from them so it's not yes. like because we feel we we tend to take it upon ourselves and start feeling guilty or whatever in like different situations sure so yeah. that yeah but alhamdulillah like studying has psychology has really helped me understand people better and this is just like the surface of course i'm just yeah i'm sure like there's so much more that you've learned is this something you want to do professionally in the future or you want to focus on your horseback this is like a bit of stuff yeah i'm I'm also kind of testing the waters but i really see myself going into equine assisted therapy so like horse assisted therapy Oh, and that's so cool. I, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. I know, I've, I've done camel therapy, like hugging camels. It was in UAE in a camel yeah, yeah, farm. Same it was really thing. cool. So basically, it's basically so animal, assist- that. animal assisted therapy. That's like the branch. And in that, there's like equine assisted therapy. Wow. So I see myself kind of maybe going there because I love horses so much and I really want... Best of both worlds. <laughs> exactly, like combining, you know. That's what I did with horseback archery. I love archery, I love horses. Let's just combine it. Yeah, exactly. And how was that journey, like the horseback archery? Like because horseback riding is challenging on its own, you know, cantering and all of that. But doing the archery while you're on the horse because you're hands-free. Yeah, exactly. How did that go about? Did you like have any incidents where you fell off the horse or something like that? Um. So... A horseback archie was like a beautiful it was a sport i didn't even know existed which is so sad this is like i feel like this is also one of my agendas <laughs> for my page i'm trying to like promote this sport yes because it's a very niche sport it's a very underrated sport and um so i after i finished learning horse i mean i didn't finish learning horse i didn't have to felt like i was comfortable enough i had a friend who is a professional horseback archer okay um and she's she's in pakistan and she keeps competing internationally and stuff. She's a hijabi and like seeing her, I was like, oh my God, I need to You do can this. do it. <laughs> yeah. So then she told me that there's this place in um, in Ummul Queen. And that's the only place in the UAE, by the way. No Which way. is insane. So like, it's this, a very rare sport. It's a very niche sport. Oh. So I signed up there for like this ground archery course. And then, um, then I started on the horse. And I feel like, alhamdulillah, for me, a lot of people, they, they, they've been riding for years, like three years, four years, but they feel like they're not ready to start horseback archery. And I had just been doing it for seven months and I was like, let's go. Yeah, that's good. And I good. think one of the main things is not because I was like a good rider or whatever, it's it's fear. That's that's like a concept that I try to explain mm. when people are learning that you, you fear need to really, take it out, yeah, throw it away. <laughs> and fear really holds you back. So it's Because this is like a scary sport, of course. Like imagine yeah. you're on a horse. Oh, my worst nightmare. And you're not like, even The holding. horse is going to come on me or and something it, and, and I'm like going to so break much, my bones. So much about life that sometimes it's okay to not control things. Just exactly. like you trust just Allah let it go. and, you know, let it, let it mm. flow and just focus on your goal. And this is one of the things that my trainer, um, I have a really good trainer, alhamdulillah. Oh my God, I need to give him a shout out. <laughs> he has been like the biggest support. He's like, mashallah, mashallah. Like he, he made me fall in love with horseback archery even more because he, he, in his classes, we he always like gives an Islamic 
holistic perspective. Okay, and like a yeah, the, so the relation with Islam and all. Yeah, of that. like he tells you uh, tells us hadiths and like his and even his way of teaching. So it's like I'm the sort of person if you start yelling at me, I'm just gonna be like I'm out. Yeah. I get stressed out. He he never yells at you. He's like Alhamdulillah, very calm. yeah, very okay. calm. I'm That's so good. blessed. If it wasn't for him, I don't know if I would have like progress as fast in the sport mm. so yeah this the, there's this thing that my like my head head coach and he's turkish he says that this is like tabakkul so um you have to give your best and you have to shoot while the horse is running but don't think if it like hit the target or something focus on the next target so it's okay. like it has taught me a lot about life it's such a what do you call what's the word like juxtaposition i don't know if that's the word basically combining completely two opposite things together Compo- opposite things in nature okay. so horse riding is such an adrenaline rushing sport you're like on the horse horse like flying and you know it's an exciting sport it gets your yes. blood rushing but archery is like such a i'm going to slow down meditate it's like a zen mm. sport you know yeah so combining two completely opposite things it's it's so poetic yeah, and it's, it's like it's art a perfect combination yeah and it, and, and it really challenges your brain cuz and it challenges challenges your brain in the sense where as people we always want to control things and you know yes um feel safe but in this you have to trust the horse and trust the trust the process exactly and just let go so basically like your your lower body is in that adrenaline rush thing like and the upper the horse, one is like focused is, you have to slow oh, and uh, like you have cool. to you know like look at the target and like you focus on it somewhere that it grows i don't know like that basically you go into this meditative state and then mm. you shoot I'm inspired to start archery, horseback riding, everything because this <sighs> sounds amazing. She's going to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Now the second section of the podcast is we're going to play a game of we're not really strangers. This is something oh I'm God. doing only in this season. Uh, before okay. this we used to do like a rapid fire. Ouch. So this is a section where we are we're going to ask each other questions. Okay, so the first question I will ask and basically it's about me. So okay. what subject do you think I thrived in at school? or did i fail in any Uni like your or perspective school? school i was going to say journalism but i was like nah that's not <laughs> school cuz you look like a journalist but i mean you are so i just keep like that was so dumb um oh my god the computer no no english you must have been good in english yes i was yeah nice. cuz journalist oh, okay you know. there you go this is for you okay so i asked you this yeah. yeah do i look kind explain Yes, you do like especially the way you talk. That's the thing we haven't met a lot of times, but I just <laughs> get that vibe even like talking with you online. I would get that really nice kind vibe. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Okay, now the second one. The second level is connection. Do you think the image you have of yourself matches the image people see you as? Oh my god, I always ask this. Like <laughs> I ask people this. Okay, so I have to say this about you, yeah? Um no, so this is about you. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like when people see me probably because of the naqab, they think I'm like very serious, intense, like I'm giving the death stare. <laughs> I can't be thinking, I mean, I don't know. Should I yeah. like squint my eyes? The eyes are you yeah. the eyes are the only thing you can and, see. And people say I look very unapproachable. Okay. Like once I'm not talking, if they just mm. like see me. Yeah. And then even my online persona, everyone thinks I'm just like really this like serious, focused person. But when they see me, I'm like they're like oh she's just like psych <laughs> <laughs> whoops <laughs> so yeah i'm kind of like you know um not as not serious. that serious yeah, yeah for sure exactly. like that's the vibe you give to me this is for you the level 2 okay what lesson took you the longest to unlearn oh wow that's deep that's this game is a very deep game <laughs> that hit me oh my god what lesson took me the longest to unlearn i think just things about control you know there's only so much that you can control and sometimes you need to let go and it goes life. back to the horseback archery thing literally yeah because i relate to that as well sometimes you think that you want to control everything you want to fix everything but if you have that strong belief and you know that whatever is going to happen it's for the best it's going to make your life so much easier uh, yeah this was game this was good and now the last session is my favorite one it's okay. called the bigger picture challenge Ooh. i don't know if you've seen it but you're going to get 60 seconds to draw a picture i'm going to say something and then you have to draw it in like oh 60 God. seconds i was an artist <laughs> oh yeah you do you do you I do paint art. okay perfect add that to the list <laughs> oh yeah oh the list keeps the list keeps getting longer just gets long. okay here you go okay uh something that you would put on your 2024 vision board 
It can be any category. Okay, can I have? Can I see the picture? Yes, Maybe I'll try to sir. guess. Okay, something in your vision board. So could it? Could that be like having your own house or focusing on your family? Or that's the vibe I'm getting. That you can tell I, me what you I have in mind. I would say like a safe space. Okay. Just in a happy. Alhamdulillah, I'm in a happy place. But um, like you know, like moving forward in life. Because right now I'm this. I'm in this like transition phase when it's like done with uni. Yes, it's a very and, overwhelming time. Yeah. So like I see myself inshallah this time next year like whatever just be like being in a in a happy place because it has like clouds there's a there's a little <laughs> it's like a little painting. sunshine yeah it's like Dude. you know like a uh, stable safe space okay i love that but yeah even like with the business horse riding everything just like i want and, and right now since i've been in this like survival mode like for so long like doing so many things so i just mm. want a slow life yes okay so i just slow need to slow zen, down yeah positive exactly okay. just positive to energy for step back and slow down Perfect. I love this conversation and I hope like everyone who listens to this conversa uh, conversation gets motivated to achieve their dreams and Inshallah. girls, honestly, hijab, niqab, nothing is a barrier. You can exactly. do anything you want in life and Amina is living proof. Do follow her on Instagram, Amina <laughs> Shifa. She has some amazing horse riding content and yeah, you're definitely going to love it. <laughs> Lots of what? Lots of nashids in the background. Oh yeah, nashids in the background Oh yeah, well. actually, wait, that's something yeah, I want to talk about as well. That one of the th main reasons why a lot of, like, I think my account really blew up was one, of course, because I was clad in, you know, yeah. wearing all of this. But um, people really liked the fact that it was just nasheeds. Because, okay. like, there's, like, obviously... Not using in songs and stuff yeah, on Yeah, because in Islam, you're not supposed to, you know, mm. like, listen to music and stuff, yeah. right? So people really liked... And that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't, because I was, like... You know, if like if I use if I use a song, then you know, like there's whole there's this whole thing like if someone listens to it, you're gonna get sin. Exactly, yeah. Etc. If it goes viral, then that yeah, means like more. so many like yes. millions of views, and Alhamdulillah, I didn't use songs because I've gotten like so many millions of views, and imagine like everyone listening to it because yeah. of me, it just like, adds up, you know. That's true. So, yeah, that's it's amazing. And, and, yeah, that's why I feel relaxed when I think about my Instagram that it's it, there's like nasheeds, and there's like so many pretty nasheeds, and it kind of goes with the vibe, you know, like. Yeah, Jamal there's some Abuja. amazing ones on yeah, Spotify exactly. as well. They have like playlists and all of that. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's amazing. So thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like this video, comment down what your favorite part was, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.